Hello everybody, I'm Chris Provost. The last time we talked, I showed you exactly why Mickey Mouse couldn't cross that line. That was just the beginning of all the secrets. I have so many more secrets to reveal to you today about Buena Vista Street. You guys like these secrets and I like telling them to you. Let's do this. All right, so here's Buena Vista Street. I'm mostly gonna show you secrets today on this side of the buildings over here. I might do a little bit over here, but primarily where we talk about this side of buildings. If you like that, then maybe I'll do another part. We'll come over here and do this side of buildings. But I have to tell you a little bit of history. So in order to understand a lot of these secrets, you have to understand what was going on. There was a thing, Michael, you guys know who Michael Eisner was, right? Michael Eisner was the CEO of Disney and some people love him, some people hate him, and it depends on what uh, your point of view. One of the things that Michael Eisner really wanted to do though is he wanted to expand uh, the Disney empire and he came up with uh, one of the main architect's ideas for Cal uh, Disney California Adventure. When he was there, there designing it though, he told the Imagineers, he's like, hey, I want to move away from Walt Disney. He was worried that having too much Walt Disney it would be it would be stuffy and like it wouldn't attract teenagers or thrill seekers. So he told like the Imagineers like let's get away from Walt Disney. But the Imagineers, of course, they're not going to do that. They love Walt Disney, so they hid and they put little touches of Walt Disney throughout the street. But they had to hide a lot of them so that way Michael Eisner wouldn't see them. So let's get into it. When a Vista Street, as you go down, you're basically traveling down a time like it's like traveling through time. I told you how this area here is 1927. That's so why Oswald's down here, and then starting over there is 1928. And so people ask me, they're like, well, Chris, besides like the baseballs that you talked about, the blue and red stitching, is there any other ways to tell the years that it is? There is, I'll show you that right now. Okay, so here's beautiful uh, Buena Vista Street. And like I said, we focus focused mostly on this side. We could talk about all that stuff over there in another video. But I want you to look right here. You'll notice that these numbers here, this is the last two numbers. That's really what you want to focus on. The, those are the last years. So you see right here, we're starting to go into 1928, those last two years right there. And then right here, the address you can see, Ignore the 26. Uh, now we're entering into 1932. And right here, we're in, entering into uh, 1938. Right there, now we're starting to enter into 1942. And so, in 19, well, ha what happened in 1941? Of course, that was uh, when Dumbo was released. Dumbo was released, and right after that, we had like the bombing of Pearl Harbor, we went into World War II. But you see where this says like 1942? If you look down in the window, who do you see? Dumbo, because Dumbo had just been released. Then as the, uh, it resets, the, it resets as, so the, the um, address is reset. But really what this, this street here, this is Walt's experience of when he moved here to California. And I did say I was only gonna really talk about this side over here, but I am gonna talk about this side a little bit too, because there's just too much good stuff. So I wanna share, can I get, hi guys. I love you. I love you too, thank you. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna talk about it because it gets me excited and let me share. Hi guys. And I like to share this stuff with you, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So let's let's talk a little bit about this side down here. I'm gonna show you something really cool. All right, this is the entrance into Disney California Adventure. We got a nice little red trolley parked right here. And I want you to look up this building here, all the way up. You're going to see, oh, it's, you're gonna see this weather vane. You see that weather vane? That's two bears, okay? And the sun, those two bears. And the sun is coming up and he's reaching for the sun. What do those bears represent? Their bears represent the year 1923. That's Walt Disney, the first bear, who's reaching for the sun. And the other bear is Roy O. Disney, not E. Disney, O. Disney. We'll talk about E. Disney in just a second, but that's Roy O. Disney, his brother. And they came out here and they're trying to uh, start this whole amazing empire of Disney. And Walt is reaching up for the sun saying, hey, I want my dream to come true. Now I'm gonna walk you all the way down the street here. I'm gonna come back and we'll talk some more about this. Uh, so don't think I'm skipping anything, but I'm gonna, uh, I need to go down for uh, consistency stake of the story and just kind of being like, making a good flow. We're gonna go all the way to the end of this street. This next one makes me a little sad. When I learned it, it made me a little sad, but I wanna share it with you guys because it is very touching and endearing. As many of you know, Walt Disney died quite young because of lung cancer and uh, that's they have a little member, a uh, little thing down here to kind of commemorate that right here. Remember when we first walk in? That was 1923, right down here, you see two bears. This is right above the trolley candy treats, but you see two bears. And underneath that bear, you see them, hand, there's a plate, there's a hand. That is the hand of fate handing Walt his dream and saying, Walt, you deserve this and you achieved it. And Walt's able to have that. And that's his brother there also sharing in that dream. Hand of fate, Walt and Roy achieving the Disney dream. 
All right, let's go back to the front of the street and start and come down again and look at some more amazing facts. Like I was saying earlier, they kind of, the Imagineers had to hide a lot of the stuff from uh, Michael Eisner because he didn't really want Walt Disney's presence felt in this park. But the Imagineers are so loyal to him, they're like, no, we have to. So they did, but subtly. Okay, we're gonna go right over here. You see this building, there's some steps that go up some, some mailboxes. Let me show you these mailboxes. As you walk up the steps, you're gonna see some mailboxes. There are four mailboxes here and they represent important people. So, each building was designed by uh, one Imagineer. They each designed one particular building. That was their job, design one building. And this building here, the Imagineer who was designing this building, he had a close friend and she ended up passing away right before it was able to open up. So she wasn't able to see it. But he got permission to put her name on a mailbox. So if you look right here, it says S. Yoshiar Yoshiwara. That was the friend of the Imagineer and he was able to get to put her name right there uh, before just to have her name to be remembered here at Disney California Adventure. Now these three here, these are Disney characters. I want you to take a look at, you might want to pause it for one second and see if you guys can tell, if you know who these different um, characters are. I'll go through them with you in just a moment, give you a second. There's E Valiant, T Ogilvy, and P Body. You ready? Let's try this one here. This is Eddie Valiant, who was in Roger Rabbit's, uh, Roger Rabbit's, uh, who framed Roger Rabbit. He's the detective, Eddie Valiant. This is the only reference I know of, of Roger Rabbit here in this park. This is T. Ogilvy. This is the Don Knotts character from the movie, The Apple Dumpling Gang. <laughs> I think that's awesome. And then Peabody, this is the um, mechanic from the movie, The Rocketeer. Disney released the movie, I think it was 91. I think he eats around there. If you haven't seen it, it's on Disney Plus. It's a great family fun movie, The Rocketeer. That is the uh, mechanic. Let's go find more secrets. Okay, I'm gonna turn right here. We're gonna go into Louis Feliz Five and Dime. I wanna show you something fun in here. Now, each one of these stores was designed by a different Imagineer. I, in that last video, I talked about Mickey Mouse. I showed you one of my very favorites is the baseballs right up there with the blue stitches. So cool. Let me show you something else really cool right down here. For this next secret, you have to know the numbers two and four. It doesn't matter which direction you go in. Two and four. That's important. You see that there's five hats here at the end of the store. And they have, it says like these five hats on little hat stands. Well, the second and fourth hat, those were designed, those were actual like replicas of hats that Walt would wear. The second and fourth, and it doesn't matter which way you count. You count this way, one, two, that one, two, three, four. Or if you count this way, it doesn't matter. Two, three, four. That hat there and that hat there. Okay, so what I was saying is this second hat here was a, like a hat that Walt wore, and that hat there was one that Walt wore. And it doesn't matter which way you count. If you count one, two, three, four, there's two and four, or you count this way, one, two, three, four. Those are the hats for Walt. There's also another little homage here to Mickey Mouse. There's a story called uh, The Brave Little Tailor. And in the beginning of the story, Mickey, he swats down and he kills five, seven flies. And he says, I killed seven flies. And the king misunderstands him. And they think he killed seven giants. And they have a giant problem. So they hire Mickey Mouse to kill seven giants. <laughs> to kill a giant because they thought he killed seven giants. So because they thought he killed seven giants, they hired him to kill a giant. And if you notice the very back of the store, they have seven what? Seven scissors because he was a tailor. And those, each of those scissors represents the, what a giant they thought that he killed, but it was only flies. All right, now I'm gonna go back outside here and uh, take you down a little bit, down this, ah, you know what, we'll cross over. I, this place, I love, I love it. I love Disney California Adventure so much. And um, so there's a lot of history here that people just don't know about it. Okay, we talked about Mortimer's last time. This here is a replica of the Hyperion Bridge that Walt lived by when he first came down to uh, California, right down here. And we're gonna walk right over here and you see it says Julius Katz. Now this window, Julius Katz, there's lots of cool things. You might wanna take your time and look at this window there's a lot of cool things to look at. First thing it says Julius Katz, right there. And it says, all repairs done on premises. He's like a watch repair guy. But Walt, one of the first creations came up with a cat. See, like, oh, let's see if I get that. There we go, there we go. There's a cat. Let's see if I pull my hat, you can see it. And the cat's name was Julius. Walt visited uh, New Orleans, and we did. His, uh, Lily was fascinated with this little 
bird cage. Inside this bird cage is a little bird that moved around and, and Walt bought that. And that was really the, the forerunner for the Tiki Room. And there's an homage to those that bird cage here and the Julius Kent's window display. Do you see those two little bird cages towards the back? That's an homage and they're very important because that's what allowed animatronics. That's an homage to the original bird cage that Walt bought. All right, let's go back across the street here. There's a lot to show here. Uh, I got there's a lot. Let's go in the toy store and then walk through the stores to show you everything. You walk in this, to this toy store and then you walk right out and this comes into the children's area. You need to look up because there's a lot on the ceiling that you probably haven't realized. First thing you notice are stars, there's a moon, and there's a sun. Now, I want you to look very carefully at this. When Disney California first opened up, you know the Pixar Pal around the Mickey's Fun Wheel? It had this giant sun face on it, a giant sun face. It was a sun wheel. Well, there's a little sun here that has the same face on it. So see that sun? That's the same face that was on the sun wheel right there. And then if you look over here, you're gonna see a cow, right? And that's the moon, the cow that jumped over the moon. And what you wanna do, and you do this with little ones, is you, look, you have to look at this, this amazing. I have to get a little closer so you can see it. You can see the, it's total moon replica. It's a little crescent moon. This is kind of fun to do with little kids. You have them kind of walking around this little way and they can actually see the cow jump over the moon. See the cow? Now if you just kind of walk along, and it looks like the cow is jumping over the moon. Huh. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the next shop, which is like, I suppose like a men's department. Some really cool things here I want you to look at, aesthetically just gorgeous. Look at the, the walls. That is rose marble, real rose marble. And one way you could tell if marble is real is you put your hand on it and it's gonna feel cold to the touch. Doesn't matter what time of year it is, it's gonna feel cold to the touch. It feels very cold right now. It's a little bit chilly today, so it's even colder than normal. But yeah, real marble is gonna feel cold to touch. So you come along and just put your hand on it. Real rose marble. Don't put your hand in the mirrors, keep those clean, but that's fun. And then you have to look down at the floor. The floor is intricate and amazing. Now, this is like a linoleum, right? A linoleum. Now, normally linoleum, when they, when they lay down, it's just done by square. Square, 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 square. No, for this one, they actually laid big pieces of linoleum. They're cut out perfectly. So you see that that brown piece of linoleum, that was cut out perfectly. And you've got this linoleum here. This is all cut out perfectly. So it's like these big pieces of linoleum were put down here. Well, the floor is actually gorgeous. We never really even look at it. I think I might have said the men's department when I came in here. This is like the women's department, not the men's, the women's. Clarify. All right, so there's, a, there's a, here we are in the women's department and behind me, you're gonna see some of these amazing photos, these like sketch drawings. There's a movie you can watch at Disney Plus called The Happiest Millionaire. And in that movie, these are the characters, these were the drawings that were done for their costumes of the movie Half Venus, Half, The Happiest Millionaire. So if you watch that movie, you can see all these costumes. They just took their sketches for the movie and they actually have just kind of, they framed them and just have them right here looking like pieces of art. Aren't they gorgeous? There's another one. It's just, please, yeah, these are all the sketches for the movie The Happiest Millionaire for costumes for the movie. And there's some more back here. And they're just this, you can see this. So if you watch that movie, you'll recognize these costumes. All right, so now we're gonna go into the men's department. This is the men's department. It's a little more manly feeling, I guess. But uh, there's something here I wanna show you. Now remember how they had to kind of keep Walt. They didn't wanna, they wanted to do homages to Walt, but Michael Eisner didn't like that. So let me show you. They actually, in the ceiling, there's a grill there. It actually spells Walt over and over and over and over and over again. It's kind of hard to see. I'll try to show it to you. There it is. Let's zoom in. Right in the center of the screen, you see that's a W. And then right next to it, there's an A with a look kind of the top. And then right next to that, that kind of drops down that little curly Q. That is the L. And then you got like a cross there for T for Walt. So it spells Walt. Let me go again. Center, W, A, L. T. Walt. 
All right, I'm gonna exit. Now, there's even more secrets here, guys, but I feel like we have to leave something to be desired later on, right? So let's walk out here, and now I'm gonna walk you next to the next store. This one, when I found this one out, <laughs> love it. Okay, it's called Elias & Co, right there. Now, of course, Elias, that's Walt's father's name, Elias. Okay, we're gonna walk you into Elias & Co. Now, this whole building is designed to be a jewelry box. You know, like a jewelry box, you open it up, and there's a, a diamond ring right in the center? That's what this whole uh, whole store is designed to be, is a giant jewelry box. Look up, you can see there's the jewel right there, right in the center of the jewelry box. It's absolutely gorgeous. Little lights down there accentuating it. Beautiful. There's actually, and this is called the Grand Madam. We're talking about her in a second, but there's a nice little jewel there, and there's another one right there in the, at the entrance. This is a giant jewelry box. All right, right behind my head, there's this chandelier. Chandelier is called the Grand Madam. It's a one of a kind and it was made from Florence, Italy. It was brought in. Now, when it was first here, the custodial crew was afraid to clean it. For three years, they didn't want to clean it. There was, it's so delicate that they, they were nervous. They were nervous to do it. Now they, they do clean it. It takes about three days to clean it. They have to go up there by hand. They take each one off and rub it down by hand and put it back here. It's something so gorgeous. And we just walk under it, don't even take a look at it. So you got to make sure you take a look at it when you come in. Flawless. Flawless. Now remember I told you it's a jewelry box and it's got this giant diamond, but it's also diamond dust. You need to look at the uh, wallpaper behind me, this light blue wallpaper, it's very important. See this light blue wallpaper? It's a little rough, you hear it scratch. And those are little diamond flecks, not real diamonds, but they represent little diamond flecks. I'm gonna move away. I feel a little weird filming by this lady's legs. Let me find a different spot. There we go. So, yeah, and you see they're little diamond, like, they're not real diamond flecks, but they're made to represent a diamond fleck of, like, we, so it's diamonds. Uh, there's so many more secrets on Buena Vista Street. I want to go through them all with you. Um, if you like this type of stuff, put it down in the comments down below. Let's see. If you. Hi! Hi guys, how are you? Alright, I'm gonna make you guys work for this one a little bit. If you want more, more secrets, and there's a lot on DCA, type in the comments down below, type in educate me on DCA. Educate me on DCA, and that way we see how many people are really interested in learning more about the history of Disney California Adventure. I, there's a lot, there's a lot here. I, I know I've strayed off of Buena Vista Street. I was only gonna do Buena Vista Street, but I just wanna do one little one down here and then I'm gonna go back to Buena Vista Street. Okay, we're gonna come down to this amazing store here called Off The Page. Off The Page, it sells amazing art, right? Remember that name, Off The Page. That's very, very, very important, okay? As you come in, you see there's a like little page of Dumbo drawing right down there. So we're gonna walk right in. All right, so this is a beautiful store, but you gotta look at all these pages. You see right here, we have an artist. It's a real artist, she's really doing work. She's working in the area right there. And if you look, there's pages. They're starting to fly off the shelves. And you'll notice the first couple pages are blank. Then as they're going along, the ideas are starting to come alive. And you'll also notice something else. The pages start to get a little bit bigger. And they start to go around the whole store, right? They're starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger, 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 bigger. But it doesn't just stop them getting bigger. Something happens. Magic, Disney magic. If you look carefully, you'll notice that the artwork has come off the page. See that? And it's zipping across. There's Mushu zipping across. There's Tarzan. Look, the vine. Tarzan is now swinging across right there. Little Mermaid, she's starting to come right off of the page. There's Jane coming off of the page. The characters are literally coming off the page. Here's a really good example of that. Look at Ariel, she's coming right off the page. Oh my gosh. Oh, guys, Megara. And as you leave the door, you can see there's Aladdin and Abu coming off the page there, that the characters are going out into the park with the magic and they're all off the page. And they're going out. There they are. And the, the characters are all coming off the page, out into the park to spread joy and happiness here at Disney. 
All right, let's go back to Buena Vista Street. Actually, I gotta find a spot to talk to you. Hang on. I think I found a spot right down here. Just gonna go down here and to talk to you and then we'll continue on. I have more secrets. We have more secrets coming up. But I want to take a quick little moment and talk to you. I know that, and yes, I am. I'm talking to you. And if you think I'm not, get that thought on your mind. I want you to know that you are amazing. You are awesome and you are special. You make the world a better place. Did you know that? And you might think, well, how do I make the world a better place? By being here. And I know that some of you might be suffering from a little bit of depression or sadness. And if you are, I want you to know it gets better. Hang in there and just know that it's gonna get better, I promise you. You are unique, you are special, and you're amazing. And you make the world a better place. And I am talking to you. Okay, all right, let's continue on with the secrets here at Buena Vista Street. I feel like Disneyland gets a lot of love because everybody loves Disneyland, which you should because Disneyland's amazing. But Disney California Adventure has a, all the heart and soul to it that a lot of people don't know. All right, you know what? I'm gonna do one more secret off of Buena Vista Street. All right, I'm gonna just take you right over here to Grizzly Peak. We'll do one secret over here. Then I'm gonna come back and show you Walt, the secret on Walt's statue. Ah, balloons. How fun. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I bopped on the forehead. That's my own fault because I got very close to balloons, but that's kind of, I think, I like to think of it as for good luck. All right, let's go right down here. Remember at the very beginning I talked about uh, Walt Disney and Roy O. Disney? I said, not Roy E. Disney. Well, now we're gonna talk about Roy Edward Disney. This is Walt's nephew. Come in here, look at this beautiful, I love this, I love this refreshment place, guys. Because you go there, that's freestyle Coke. You get, you get your Coca-Cola's flavor the way you want. But right down there, the license plate on this Rambler station wagon is Roy Edward Disney 110. That's born on the January 10th. That's when he was born. And this is like, there's a lot of cool hidden stuff here. Now, if you look at this here, this is one of the very first attractions they had was the Rainbow Caverns. It was a mine trained, um, like they went through the, this rainbow it was spectacular, but it was, that's where Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is now, but it's, it's gone. And they also had like the Brownstone. That's a Humphrey Bear, uh, the Humphrey Bears, you know Humphreys, or in Brownstone National Park. Oh, just found a pizza truck. <laughs> All right, nice. But we want to look over here at this map. Now, one thing you need to know about uh, Roy. Edward Disney, is that he was a big proponent of uh, nature and outdoors. And one of the things that he put, he did a lot of, he pushed for a lot of films about nature and going outdoors because he felt that was important. This little map of Grizzly Peak. If you look here, what do you see? Red's Ridge, that's in honor of uh, Roy. And then right down here, Red's Top Road. That's awesome. I love that. All right, let's go back to Buena Vista Street and take a look at uh, the statue of Walt Disney. There's a little mistake on it, but I don't think it's a mistake. I think it was done on purpose because it was done with love and I think it's the way we want to think of him. You understand when we see the statue. Okay, I'm gonna walk by the balloons, but not too close because I don't want to get bopped in the head. All right, so here's this amazing, it's called the Storyteller's uh, Statue. You see Walt here. Now there's kind of two things. Walt's a little bit older than he would have been. When he came out here, he would have been a little bit younger. And there's also one other thing you'll notice he has on a wedding ring. Now when he first came out here, because this is supposed to be the picture when he first came out here to California, his little travel case and all that, Mickey Mouse, um, Walt would not have been married. But I think we like to think of Walt as Walt and Lily. They were so magical together. I think that's why we have that, because we want him to think about the time that he did. He came out here and met his soulmate. Are you guys enjoying this series? There's so many history uh, secrets here. And there's stories that this place has to tell. If you want to do more, if you want to learn more, put it down in the comments down below. Educate me about DCA. And if I get enough, if I get over a hundred comments to say that, then I will uh, do a part, another part about this. Because we really didn't even go on this side of the street. There's a whole bunch of, oh, there, oh. So even though Michael Eisner didn't really want Walt to be here all the time, he's here all the time. And this side of the street, I haven't even really touched on that. Just a little tiny bit. There's a lot, there's a lot. Walt is interwoven throughout all of Disney California Adventure. And when you start to look around and see it, I mean like, he's everywhere. His spirit is. And I'm glad that they did that. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like and subscribe because I'm gonna do more videos like this if I get enough uh, interaction down in the comment section down below. All right guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Oh, I forgot to mention something. We're doing something really crazy here at Pearl's Park Pass. We asked a lot about Walt Disney World and I am going down starting on May 12th I'm gonna be staying at every single on-property uh, hotel down at Walt Disney World. And I'm gonna be doing 20 videos, 20 days in a row. I'm gonna be rating all the hotels there for you. And you guys have given me so much feedback. You want me to tell you like 
flushing pressure and like shower pressure and the pools and the beds. We're gonna rate them all. So if you wanna, go, if you wanna be board, uh, on board for that amazing event, hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell notification. Cause starting May 12th, that's gonna be crazy fun. All right guys, now it's for real, the real goodbye. I hope you like these secrets about DCA. I think they're interesting. I think it's really cool how they're woven in the history of Walt Disney and the Disney California. If you like the video, hit the subscribe button. We got lots more things coming along and you guys are amazing. And thank you to our Patreons. You're the best.